I'm very happy to get invited here. My first time to New Zealand. I have been in the area three times in Australia, but that's more or less it. It's um, happy to be here. I love to come and visit new places. And that's actually one of the reasons why I created my school and started with open source, just to be able to visit the world and do more of So I have quite a lot of slides. Uh, um, here, what I will talk about, um, I will not go through everything in the slides. I will assume that everybody here can read English. If not, I can translate to Finnish if it helps. But um, it's kind of time to celebrate in that MySQL and MPHP are both 20 years. Um, and uh, the code is actually much older. So I worked on MySQL and MariaDB related code now for 30. 34 years, I'm still actively programming. And uh, when I'm not traveling and uh, talking about MySQL and MariaDB and open source, I sit home and doing development with the rest of the team. And the MariaDB, the follower of MySQL is six years. So how many using, have, are using MySQL here? OK. And MariaDB? OK, that's good still. 40%. We need to get up to 100 by the end of today. So if you have any problem installing MariaDB by the end of this session, go and talk with me. So the, but this is actually the second celebration with uh, PHP. Here is uh, 10 uh, years ago uh, with uh, Rasmus Lerdov at uh, another PHP event. And uh, me and Rasmus actually become quite good friends uh, relatively early on. He was one of the early adopters of uh, MySQL. And many of the reasons of MySQL success actually comes from PHP actively been promoting and using it. But uh, going back in time, so as I said, uh, I released MySQL as open source uh, with, a, with a notion that uh, I can give something back uh, to open source. But also, I thought that if you be successful, it would give me more opportunities to see the world. So this is in 99, when uh, uh, my daughter, Mu, um, was uh, with me in Madagascar and looking at uh, events. And uh, these uh, guys had never seen a blonde small girl before. So. Uh, I love the fact that when you work with open source, uh, you can uh, combine working with home and having a family. And uh, in the beginning of uh, the MySQL uh, journey, things were pretty good. We also had, uh, I also have a son, Max, uh, and we had a product called MaxDB. And uh, when you take investors and uh, you the company starts to grow, there's always some growing pains. And those who know the MySQL history did, does know that we eventually come into quite strange company. And some of us got a little bit scared about what will happen. And fortunately, there's somebody who can take over. The nice thing with open source is it's very, very hard to kill a project especially if you have people actively working on it and wants to work on it. So me, my, my daughter, she has been traveling the world even more than I, I am, have done. And she has uh, spent three years traveling in, in Australia, South America, and so on. But the question uh, people ask, so we have no MariaDB. Is the next generation up to it? Is it actually? Uh, is MariaDB able to take over my, MySQL? MySQL is one of the big successes in open source. It's really hard uh, work to take over something that has such a good name recognition. It's a little like pulling out a rabbit out of a hat. I do like this picture because before I started to programming when I was very young, I thought that I, I would maybe want to have a career by doing magic. So this is kind of my magic picture. Uh, but we in the MariaDB team, we are pretty confident that we can actually pull it off and do a success again. So this is one of the pictures I've been forbidden to show in U.S. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, I'm not in the U.S. now. And uh, there, I have 
put this picture up because I like the fact that Maria is very, very confident. She, can, she looks like she can take on anything. This is not to promote, promote the guns in any way. And uh, even if I said that in the US, people still come and blame me on Twitter that how dare you show a girl with a gun. This is about confidence. So I've been uh, programming quite a while. My first programmable, programmable computer or calculator, calculator I got in 1975. I quickly noticed that, hey, this is fun. Upgraded to one of the first personal computers that you could buy in Finland in 78 uh, with uh, 8 uh, kilobytes of uh, memory, which I quickly upgraded to 16K. And back then, you could do a lot of things with 16K. I, I um, programmed in BASIC. I met uh, Alan Larson, the third founder of MySQL, pretty early. It was actually me, he who sold me the 8K RAM that I needed to get this computer up and running. And I did uh, spend a lot of time writing games in the early years just to show uh, my friends that you can actually do something useful with the computer. Because when you bought computer back then, there were no, no programs at all. So I spent uh, a lot of time doing a lot of uh, stuff, uh, word processor, hard disk controller, tape backup software, and so on. Lots of things in uh, assembler. Um, what I did notice uh, was that um, we're working at uh, my first company, Tapilak, so my job was uh, taking programs from uh, big microcomputers and uh, adding those to micros. And, uh, and, and um, this was kind of bookkeeping and uh, payroll systems. But I did notice that most of the programs was almost identical. It, except that the screen that you put information was, was the same, but everything else was identical. And uh, having translated some, some 40 programs that uh, you had then to keep, keep up and maintain, and you notice that this is kind of a waste of time. So I decided that let's try to do it easier. And then I wrote a program that you can just paint your, your screen on, on the computer, and it automatically will create a database that you can then start, start working on. I also did the, the same thing for reports. And that was actually the first embryo for creating something useful for me. that then become MySQL. And uh, the reason I'm telling all, uh, all of this is that uh, to see the process of uh, programming what you do, what's, uh, what's useful, and, uh, and also to understand uh, what you need to do to become successful in open source and actually success successful in writing applications. So all, all this work I did before just prepared me for what, what was uh, done uh, later. So the first my skull call was Unireg. I, I spent some 10, 15 years optimizing that until I um, finally wrote my skull on top of that. And the reason all of this evolvement evol um, uh, happened was that this was something my customer needed. Uh, until my school was released at open source, I was always working with uh, customers uh, adapting this first uh, pro uh, simple database program for their needs. And uh, now we're looking at companies that we are investing into uh, through Open Ocean Capital, a company was part of funding. Uh, there's lots of companies who uh, are trying to just create an idea and uh, um, for something that they see that some people need, and then they try to do a program and sell. Usually, they are not that successful. Those who have the same background like me have, you have actually worked on a problem, you are working with customers for 10 years and know and understand the problem and the pain points. Then you do something to solve it. Usually, uh, if you solve it for a set of customer, it also applies to a lot of other ones. And uh, that's uh, one of the things I give advice that if you want to do something uh, to create a product and get successful on it, 
do something that you actually need yourself or that you see your, your company is needing. And when you get that to work, then you probably have something to sell to others. But back to my SQL. So I've written a SQL interface on top of this uh, uh, simple database and released that under dual licensing. Um, we then uh, took investment, uh, hired a CTO, um, and uh, we got quite popular by 2015. Uh, we were working with SAP, and uh, we were just able uh, in 2015 to run SAP's main product on uh, MySQL because SAP wanted to replace uh, uh, Oracle with MySQL. Somehow Oracle got to know this and they bought in a DB just to stop us for, from doing that. And uh, Oracle kind of thought that this would be the end of MySQL. But that didn't stop us from selling MySQL to Sun for $1 billion some years later. I spent one year, year at Sun uh, to help Sun be successful in open source. But then the, the problem is that when you come a small company, uh, or, or said group of developers who uh, li like to work closely together and, and uh, with quite a lot of freedom. When they got uh, involved in Sun, uh, they liked the culture of Sun, but the administrative part was very, very hard and cumbersome. I didn't like that. So people started to say that we're going to leave. We don't like the, this big company. So I did an agreement with Sun that I will leave Sun and start to hire these people who didn't want, want to work at Sun, but I would work with Sun from this company. In this case, Sun wouldn't lose the talent, and still the people who wanted to work on my school could still have the feeling of a small company and continue as before. At least that was the plan. But everything changed when, changed when Oracle uh, announced that they will acquire Sun. And uh, uh, they uh, did tell the European Union that uh, uh, they will not buy Sun if they don't get MySQL. MySQL was one of the primary reasons uh, for buying Sun, which made me a little bit nerv nervous. And that's why when I decided that uh, instead of just taking it easy and uh, do something else. I didn't want uh, MariaDB to die, or MySQL to die, so I recreated it uh, with the original team, hired almost everybody of the really core engineers from Oracle, and we started to work on MariaDB. And uh, it took uh, almost five years until uh, we started to actually replace MySQL in most most distributions. No, all distributions support MariaDB. Most have MariaDB as default. So, no, when people install OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE or Red Hat, they will get MariaDB instead of MySQL. So, now we are kind of on the winning side. But it took a long time for me to do that. And uh, the company I created was called Monty from AB. We merged with uh, SkySQL to create the MariaDB Corporation a couple of years ago. So the reason why I want, went to open source was that uh, I already started to work with free software around 84, and I always loved the concept of um, working with a community and actually creating something that you don't have to uh, pay for, and uh, except if you wanted to have something extra. Uh, we wanted to give something back to the open source community for a long time, but we didn't really have something. This Unireg tool that I had created, it was very advanced. You could do a bookkeeping program in two days, but it was very hard to explain to somebody else to do, to do that. I didn't want to spend a lot of time writing uh, documentation in uh, lots of different languages, and it was a little bit cumbersome for others. So, and David didn't have anything else. Uh, to release. So it, MySQL was kind of the first program that we thought that, hey, this solves a lot of our problems. Let's release this as uh, almost uh, free software. This was before uh, open source. And uh, try to um, do some good. And at the same time, uh, we choose the license that would uh, ensure that uh, we should be able to work on this full time. Uh, back then, 
there, there were lots of people who were releasing open source software, but there were very few who actually could make a living on it. And we, I, I, I and David were working as consultants. We wanted to do open source full time, but we, we needed to find a license and a way to do, ensure that we get enough money so we can spend all our time doing that. And uh, I didn't like the idea has to, to do the same way as many others that uh, you do open source or, or free software on the side and then you do consulting on the, on the other side just to get, get enough money to be able to do your open source work. So I love the concept of dual licensing that we uh, took from GoScript. We were the second comp company who was using that. We were the first one who were successful in doing that. And that allowed us, after two months, we were profitable, and we did grow to 15 people being profitable the whole time. And I really love the concept of being able to do something good. And we had, uh, over time, we had one in a thousand who paid for either license or support. And when you have millions of users, that's more than enough to, to create a very successful company. The problem with the dual licensing uh, is that uh, this doesn't work for everything. So we, we, how we did, we were the first company who did uh, license on GPL, and the idea was that, uh, how, how, how many understand dual licensing here? Okay, who doesn't? Just, just checking if you speak English. <laughs> okay, so dual licensing, uh, what we did was that we released MySQL under GPL, and that means that you can freely use this internally for anything you want. But if you combine that with closed source software and ship it, then you, your software has to be uh, also GPL. Uh, there are companies like Cisco and Adobe who really loved MySQL, but they didn't want to release all their software as uh, GPL, so they paid us to get exactly the same software, but under a, a normal closed source license, so they could do, ship them. And, and we got more than half of our money uh, uh, from that. In the early days, we got, got about 80% of money from licensing, but the end about 50, 60. And without that, we would never have been able to do MySQL full time, and especially not create a team around that. And this is the, the, the state of most companies trying to do open source. I would advise anybody who wants to do money on open source, uh, you need to choose a license that you force a small part of your community to pay. Otherwise, you will not be successful. I've seen too many companies fail and just disappear just because they haven't understand the need to pay the developers. And uh, the dual license doesn't work for everything. It works perfectly for infrastructure pr programs like MySQL that you can embed in others and ship. But if you do a, a GUI uh, or a game, nobody will pay for shipping that with other software. So you will not be able to, do, to make money on that. And that's why you see so little open source programs or free software on phones, and which, which is a shame, which is why me and David come up with something we call business source. Um, you can find a, a, on my blog a lot of information about that. But that's a, a license that is eventually open source and can apply to anything. You can do any program with the business source license, and uh, you can still ensure that you get a certain target of users to pay. So we are, I'm trying to advocate that to companies uh, in Europe that want to be open source, but can't afford that, but still would like to do something good. And by the way, if you have any questions at any time, uh, please ask them. Uh, uh, the slides will be available, so you can get all the information for there, but I would prefer more interactive uh, discussions, but because I'm a programmer by heart, I'm, the only reason I'm here uh, and talking is because uh, when people ask me nicely, I have a very hard time to say no, and I do like to travel, so, and I've been here before, so. But anyway, so during the first five years, we grew from two people, me and David, to 15, all developers, no sales. Uh, we were virtual from day one, no offices, and we were profitable until 2001. And we spent a lot of time just getting the name out and uh, 
PHP and Perl was uh, the two programs that helps the most to spread MySQL. And I believe that one of the main reasons we were successful was that I spent so much time helping people. I noticed that uh, I really like to be on the main list and, um, and then, then later on on IRC and helping people and solve their problems. You can, if you go to the MariaDB channel on, uh, on Freenode, you, st you can still find me there helping people. And uh, during the first five years, I wrote personally 30,000 emails just helping people. And I think that was one of the reasons that my school took off. This was before, before Postgres. Uh, Postgres did come a couple of years afterwards, but they were not very friendly to new people. And I created a really friendly community around MySQL that in some parts still exists. And David spent a lot of time visiting conferences. Uh, and while I was in, in the, actually in a cellar in Finland doing software. And this was during the time where um, people at like Microsoft uh, said that you can't do open, uh, products that can compete with closed source anymore, anymore in the cellar. And um, when you are successful, you will get uh, approached by investors. So uh, already in 98, 99, we got an offer for, to sell the MySQL for 50 million USD, uh, US dollars. And um, back then it was basically me, David, and Alan who owned the whole company. And uh, we had a hard time saying no, but uh, the reason we said no was that uh, this was during the internet uh, bubble. I don't know how many of you remember it, but basically every, anything that had the name Linux or open source was valued really high on the market, and we didn't really understand where this valuation did come from. So we really, really didn't want to sell because we didn't uh, know that, that the stocks that they would pay us uh, with actually be, we, we would be worth anything after a couple of years. And in this case, we were right that the company that uh, was approaching us basically tanked um, one year later, so the stocks would have been pretty worthless. But we also thought that the product was not ready and we didn't, the company wanted to buy the, full comp, uh, the whole company and we would have lost the control of MySQL. Still, I, had, I thought that uh, the words need a free database. And uh, we loved the concept that most, of, most people could use it for free. So we spent five more years developing MySQL until it was uh, good enough until we started to go to the next step. And the uh, reason we took in investors was that um, when you have 15 people, I was handling everything, all salaries and, every, and all the paperwork. It started to take a lot of time out from my uh, development time. Postgres started to be, be popular, more popular. Customers wanted to have more features in, more rapidly than we could do. So we had three choices. Continue to grow organically uh, or sell MySQL or take investors. And we decide, decided to take in investors just because we thought that that would be the best for MySQL long term. When me and David created MySQL originally, we didn't really do it uh, with the notion that we will earn a lot of money on this. We did the notion that, hey, we can do open source and get uh, paid for doing that and, and don't have to do anything else. The extra money we got was kind of a nice bonus but that was not what drove, drove us to do this. And uh, lots of people asked, so why did we sell to uh, Sun and, uh, and then eventually to Oracle? The thing is that when you take investors, you have no say of what will happen to the company. In the end, you know that it has to be public or sold. And we always plan to go uh, uh, public. And in the end, I'm very happy that uh, Sun bought us because I love Sun as a company and the concept. A company who really understands uh, technology, understands the value of open source, and wanted to buy us uh, mainly because we were open source and we could teach Sun to be even more open source friendly. And uh, I'm also very afraid that if we would go publicly, uh, 
the management team would close my Square and make that to an open core product, which they actually had secret plans to do, but I didn't get to know that until later. And that actually is a good thing that if some, so how many here is working on open source? Okay, that's quite good. I was uh, told earlier that uh, New Zealand is a place where Microsoft is very strong. I, I see that there's still a resistance here. And uh, some of the advices I can give you with open source is that uh, the first one is that uh, ensure that you have some way to get, uh, get paid for. The other thing is that uh, you shouldn't assume that everybody who wants to invest and help you are friendly in you with you long term. You need to basically have a plan B uh, so, so that if things go really, really bad, the product will survive. In my school, I actually didn't have a plan B, and it was kind of pure luck that we were able to do what we were doing. But I will come to the, back to that later of how you can create a, a plan B. And uh, I say, I'm saying here that um, we started to get a big chasm between managers and, and the rest, and that was because uh, the open source people had created the product, that was the developers. All the managers and most of the salespeople hired to sell MySQL, they were closed source people. And then uh, the, uh, the, the salespeople started to approach us and said, couldn't you do something uh, closed source uh, so that you could sell more? Or MySQL is so stable that people don't uh, want to buy support. Could you introduce, introduce some bugs so that we can get more people to buy support. People are actually suggesting that. Probably just for fun, but still with a little bit of thought behind it. So MariaDB I, I created because uh, I wanted to three things. I wanted to ensure that the product I worked on you know, for more than 30 years actually wouldn't just disappear. I spent too much uh, time on that. I also wanted to keep the MySQL talent together because the only way that an open source product can die is if all the developers start to go to other products. And with Oracle buying uh, MySQL with Sun, lots of people started to leave and go to different companies. And I'm pretty sure that if I wouldn't have interfered and started to hire these people, they would start working on something else and MySQL would have died just because nobody could keep up the development of it. And I also wanted to ensure that there would always be a free version of MySQL. And as Oracle didn't back then and not until now have given a single promise about the MySQL future, I have no trust in them. Uh, because if they really would want to be part of the MySQL, future and free software, they should be able to sell that we will support this forever. There's not a single promise at all from Oracle of what will happen with MySQL after some years. So uh, when I created MariaDB, uh, we, we started first with actually working on a Maria Stories engine. That was why I left Sun, but we then uh, renamed the whole product MariaDB. We thought that was kind of cute uh, to have my youngest daughter also get a chance to be famous. And uh, we started basically the same way as MySQL. A vir uh, virtual company, everybody was working from home. Uh, we only did technical uh, um, things like, uh, like fixing bugs, uh, doing development for the companies. And I thought that uh, as we have no the whole core team who did MySQL um, work at MariaDB, we should be able to get some of these big companies like the LinkedIn, Google, and uh, Facebook to interest to, to sponsor us because we are, we're actually protecting their future because all these companies are using MySQL and they are pretty depending on it. But uh, that was something that went wrong or I did count wrong because I went to all these big companies and what the salespeople at Sun has, had done as soon as they got information that um, Oracle will buy us. They went to all the customers and told that Oracle will buy uh, MySQL, all your prices will go up tenfold. No, you should buy uh, insurance for there. You should buy a 
five-year subscription just to keep the cost down. And everybody did. So when I approached all these big companies, they told me that, well, we already have support, come back after five years. And nobody was uh, interested to help at all. So I, I did put uh, of my own money um, that I got from uh, Sun, uh, 4 million euros, just to uh, get MariaDB to survive the first five years. <coughs> so I did mention SkySQL earlier. So the Monte Program AB was, the task was providing a home for all these people who worked on, on um, MySQL. I didn't have enough money to be, also, to also be able to create a home for the people who were doing training, uh, sales, uh, and support. So I did find an investor who were interested in creating such, such a company, and, I, and me and some others did find SkySQL for the, for the home or the other ones. Um, and they were selling support, and then they did, did buy um, back support from Monteprom AB. This was actually the, the, the company who helped me get, also get over the first years. And then uh, in 2014, we joined forces, and now SkySQL is owned of MariaDB trademark. They have some 80 people working, and they have all the best engineers, and most of them, MariaDB captains, the one who has commit access to MariaDB. <coughs> the, the problem was that I didn't want what happened to MySQL to happen again. If Oracle would buy uh, Sky, Sky, Sky SQL or MariaDB Corporation, we will be back in the beginning again. To ensure that that wouldn't happen, I created the MariaDB Foundation, who is the owner of the MariaDB server project. It doesn't have all the um, trademarks, but it has the trademark for the MariaDB Foundation, MariaDB.org, and MariaDB Survey, which means that the MariaDB Foundation is the one who says that this is the official MariaDB release. And nobody can remove that. With MySQL, I can't get a patch into MySQL. And that's why basically MySQL is a dead uh, product from open source community point of view. Nobody except Oracle can get patches in. With the Marbonidi Foundation owning uh, the repositories, anybody can get access if you're good enough. So I kind of learned from my mistakes. And. Uh, Personally, I'm not working at the MariaDB Corporation. I'm working at the foundation just to ensure that MariaDB is always free. <coughs> we are now f f uh, four full-time MariaDB developers working on it. We have a CEO, um, Otto Kekalainen, and we have uh, one documentation writer who's doing free documentation. And uh, these are the uh, companies who have helped us doing what we are doing, because uh, without the foundation, I would have a hard time <coughs> to actually achieve what we've done with MariaDB. Oh, sorry. <coughs> and Automatica, Automatic is also sponsoring this conference, so I'm very happy for their involvement in open source. <coughs> so, you few who are not, okay, the, the few majority who hasn't using, are not using MariaDB yet. You, you can get MariaDB now everywhere. It's replacing MySQL in most distributions. We have um, actually more platforms supported than MySQL nowadays. We just uh, partnered with IBM and we have System Z and uh, Power 8 also supported. I don't know if anybody is using their using them, but it's more important that we are really trying our best to, to ensure that we are running it everywhere. <clears throat> and uh, for you who are not using MariaDB yet, so, so but what MariaDB is, it's a branch of MySQL. We merge with all the code from MySQL. We are dropping replacement. It's actually easier to upgrade to new MariaDB version than from MySQL for example, 5.5 to 5.6 or 5.6 to 5.7. We are really take care that we are backward compatible, 
we don't remove features, and we're guaranteed to be open source. And anybody can be part of our development. So uh, there are, in Maribri Corporation, there are some 20 people who have access to the code outside of the company. There are some 15 people more, and everybody can get access to it. So during the last five years, we have done five, uh, five releases. The sixth is RC should be today, and we should hopefully we'll ha have a GA by the end of the month or close to there. Anybody using Galera? So Galera is a, a, no, it was a separate product earlier from the Galera team. Now it's part of 10.1. So that's a multi-master um, server. So you can have 10 MariaDB server communicating uh, together. And if somebody goes down, still the, the, the work network is up. So it's an um, easy way to split reads and writes. So any questions about uh, actually the early and the history or what I talked about so, so far? Because now we are going more to what MariaDB the product is. So, uh, the, the, first we were just 15 engineers. Uh, but the nice thing we were, that was beneficial for us was that we were a virtual company from the start. Every, I was in Finland, David was in Sweden, the first guy we hired was in Yugoslavia, next was in Germany, because when we were virtual from the start, it didn't matter where we hired more, more people. That means also, also meant that we communicated everything in email, and later with IRC. And we're still doing that now, nowadays. But uh, when you are virtual, you can actually grow much easier uh, than if you're not virtual, because you don't need offices, and you can still chat with every, everybody when needed, with a time delay, but you get used to the time delay. So the technical part works very well. Very well. Then we started to get investors, and we, we, we grew to about 50 people. But we were still completely virtual. And we did have uh, one company meeting a year and two developers meeting a year, just to ensure that we meet. And up to 50 people, there were no, not a big change. But when we took the second round of investment from Benchmark, then they demanded that the management team should move to Silicon Valley. And uh, then you got a team in, in one place, one hub, who didn't understand open source or didn't really care about open source. They only care about making money. And that's when you got a problem in the company. You kind of get a company that was of two parts. One who cared about software, real technical, wanted to do the best possible, and wanted to be open source. And then one who just cared about money. And then you kind of got a schism in the company. Uh, we still had some company meetings. They were trying to get down with those because the management team that thought that we are all here who do the decision in one place. Why do we care about the rest of the company? We don't really need to meet. But I, as one of the founders, I demanded these meetings. And up to 200 people, the meetings were still possible, and you could still know most of the people. But kind of, it was not the same company anymore. And, and bef when we were sold to Sun, we were 400 people. The last two, couple of weeks, we hired 50 more, but I don't really count those. And then it started to already be so that lots of people that you didn't know and you couldn't really contact because you were still virtual when we were here as the development unit and everything else. So I would say that the ideal company to work on uh, would be around 100 people. And then you can still have a culture, and you have, can have a common agenda, and you don't have too much politics going around. And now we are with the MariaDB Corporation and the foundation, we're together 100 people, and I still, th still things are working fine. And actually, with the foundation, be able to say that, no, we're not, we can't be closed source, we can't do this, 
we have to take care of the community, and if you don't do it, we will do it. It actually gives me more power than I ever had before. So I kind of like the setup that, that nobody can tell me what I can do in the foundation, because I will always protect the open source part. So that's, that works good. So five minutes quickly go up about what MariaDB is uh, and what you get if you move from MySQL to MariaDB. So we have the first version was just making a free build system that anybody can build MySQL and the name of MariaDB. With 5.2, we spent one year taking everything from the community that MySQL has uh, neglected. And, uh, and that was also part of this thing, this schism with the, with the company, that when we got the investors in, uh, they actually killed the open source community part in the uh, organization. And, and uh, the, the reason was that we are all working open source, so we will help the community on our free time, which actually uh, ended us taking in, in, in the patches from the community, not just because we didn't want to, just because we didn't have anybody who could, had time to do that. And that actually was all, also one of the slow uh, things that kind of killed the community part. So we took all these patches into 5.2, virtual column, columns, uh, user statistics, and so on. And with 5.3, because we had the whole optimizer team moving from MySQL to MariaDB, we spent a lot of time adding a lot of features to uh, 5.3. And then we merged. But then MySQL released 5.5. We had already done three releases our, ourselves. We merged that, and that's basically 5.5. The current uh, stable one is 10.0, has most of the 5.6 features with much better uh, replication and actually working global transaction ID. And 10.1 that is coming out now, we have uh, the big things are Galera is um, part of the product. So we have a multi-master, not only standard replication with the one master and also replicas. Now you can also do <coughs> lots of master and the ma ring of masters, and then you can have uh, replicas outside. But uh, the, one of the really cool things are strong encryption. There'll be lots of debates in the news about uh, people stealing passwords and everything else. The strong encryption that will cost you about 10% performance. <clears throat> there is nobody who can steal your hard disk, as long as you keep your keys uh, somewhat secure. So a couple of slides about why people should uh, move to from MySQL to MariaDB. So the, MySQL, the people who are using MySQL, how many are using 5.5? Five, 5.6? Five? Five, 5.7? Five, uh, it says, it looks like about half are using 5.5 five and 5.6. Five, <clears throat> so compared to 5.5, five, um, MySQL, that, uh, this was one of the reasons people started to uh, look at MariaDB, that MySQL 5.5 five five and earlier doesn't, this, that's the yellow curve, doesn't at all perform uh, when you're using replication. That was actually because of bugging in the DB. Facebook tried to fix it, that's the red line, and then uh, they asked, can we do it better, and that's the blue, blue line. Which basically shows that if you're using MySQL 5.5 and move to MariaDB, you get the instant uh, 5 to 10, 10 next speed up without doing any changes to your application. And, and this was when lots of big companies started to come us and say, hey, we should start using MariaDB. Okay, sorry. In 10.0, we sp sp did sp add a full parallel slave. Uh, MySQL 5.6 doesn't have anything like it. 5.7 uh, has somewhat, but not even close. But um, uh, this just showed that uh, bef before, the slave basically didn't scale at all. No, no with 40 threads, you have a eight times or 12 times speed up by just adding one option for doing things in parallel. And then uh, this also shows that uh, 
both 10 1, 10 0, and a special, special this is actually for 10 1. So if you have your slave running, or sorry, master running, and, um, and then you replicate to the slave, you want the slave to be as fast as the master. The biggest problem in MySQL has always been that the slave was never able to keep up with the master. So it has to be up to 100% um, of the master. With um, MariaDB, we are, with, if you're running one or two or four threads on the master, we are basically, are, the slave is faster than the master with one thread. And that's the basic number of threads on the slave. But if you have, uh, you, if you run with eight uh, thread, threads on the slave, that's the green one, we basically are able to keep up with the master in, in spite of how many threads they're running on the master. So this basically shows just that. If you conf configure slave with eight or more threads, uh, sorry, yes, eight or more threads, your slave will be able to keep up. Uh, we only have one minute, so I will not go through these uh, NoSQL things, but uh, we have added lots of nice features to be in MariaDB to be able to handle things that traditionally only NoSQL can do. And we call that, that's something that I implemented calling dynamic columns that allows you to have basically that every row in your database has a different set of columns, like you can get with MongoDB or, or something else, but still everything is type safe and uh, we did it by adding seven different uh, functions to work, to store these things in a blob. And we also have a column to JSON, so you can get it out in JSON format if you like that. We added uh, a new thread pool in MariaDB because one of the things that Oracle did almost immediately was that uh, they removed that feature from MySQL. I made that a paid only feature in, in Oracle Enterprise, or MySQL Enterprise. And um, um, one of the problems that you have when you have one trade per connection as MySQL and MariaDB has by default is that after one 256 connections running at the same time, basic performance drops at once. And that's because all the CPU is doing is scheduling threads, and you don't have any CPU to actually do the query. By configuring with pool of threads, and you say that let's have 64 threads handling all your queries, you basically don't get any performance degradation at all. So this is one option uh, you can use in MariaDB. If you have a busy site with lots of users, you get instantly uh, in this case, 100 times speed up if you have lots, lots of uh, connections. And we have, a, have lots of people in conferences. Uh, we had the Drupal conference uh, or talk at a Drupal conference one year ago, and we told them, try MariaDB with this option, and next day people just come and say that the, the, the problem they had on the website just disappeared. We are basically out of time, so... Uh, this is also that we worked on Power 8 and, um, with IBM, and we had a task that let's get MariaDB to perform better on Power 8. It also get, we also got lots of better performance also on other platforms, especially on Power 8. So by working with them for six months, we got uh, almost 50% speed up. So if you want to help with MariaDB, you just come to the mariadb.com slash KB site. There's a knowledge base, anything about how to get MariaDB, use MariaDB, and be part of the community. And the challenges of forking MySQL, the biggest one was that we didn't have a single paying customers for the first, for the first four years, except SkySQL. But, and it was also hard to do a business model because we couldn't do dual licensing. We just could do support. We have free documentation. And uh, 
compared to MySQL, who is only driven by Oracle, there's lots of companies working with, with MariaDB. And uh, we have, I believe that we have some three million installations by now, just because we are part of all these big uh, distributions. And one of the things that really changed things for MariaDB was that in, when I created the foundation, I uh, went to Wikipedia and told them that uh, if I can help you to move from SQL 5.1 that they're using to MariaDB and we give better performance, I am willing to move to uh, MariaDB. And say, they said, we can uh, at least test, test it, and uh, they got lots of better um, improvements, uh, speed improvements. They were also able to go away from a very patched MySQL version that, that was patched, especially for Wikipedia, but they couldn't maintain anymore. So they were very happy with that. They wrote a couple of blog posts about that. And that actually got us uh, to get recognized people started to get us into distributions, and that, together with the foundation, really was able to do, make MariaDB a success. And uh, in April 2015, Gartner uh, d defined MariaDB as one of the leading open source uh, databases uh, that actually are competing with the closed source ones successfully. And uh, why should you stick with MySQL? The, the, the short answer is there's not a single reason whatsoever to use MySQL anymore. So just switch. And the nice thing is that it's that easy to switch. And uh, to prove that, so there were about 10 people using MariaDB here. Had any of you a single problem at all switching from MySQL? I think that proves it. I've, I've done that now in. Uh, 15 conferences, probably even more. Not a single problem. And here you had the reason that made MySQL successful. So, no time for questions. S sorry for being a little bit over time. Please give a warm thank you to uh, Monty. <laughs>